Two, three, four. Run up your engines! Now, being machines, cars generally break down in patterns. If one particular model breaks down, guess what? So do all the other ones. And with all this world economic, you might not be able to get parts for your car. If your car is similar to other people's cars, they all need the same parts. Coming down the parts line, you may not be able to get that part. Now, people have been hoarding toilet paper, drinking water. Well, not too many people are hoarding auto parts, but there's only so many auto parts out there. And when they're sold, if they're not restocked, guess what? You go in, you can't find what you need. Now, in normal times, I live in a big city here in Houston. There's auto parts stores all over the place. So when he needs a water pump, I just start tagging it apart, get a water pump, and fix it. Well, even today, myself, I will now see, it needs a water pump, I will call my parts places, make sure that they say they have the water pump, and I tell them, could you put your hands on it, and when they do and say, yeah, we got it, I'll start taking it apart. The last thing in the world anybody wants is, you take your car apart, then you got the piece you need, you can't get it, and now you can't drive your car. Now, this is, well, today, with everybody staying at home, it's even more important to find out is the part available before you start fixing the car. And if it is, my advice today, go and buy the thing. You're gonna need it anyway, right? So at least you'll have it on hand. Maybe you don't have the time to put a water pump on now. But hey, we're all at home, there's all kinds of time. You might as well as get it now rather than later. And of course, this applies to things that aren't that hard to replace. If they're starting to go out, my advice is change them now. Look, your car battery. They're easy to test. It takes about a minute to took a tester up or pay somebody with a tester or go to a place like AutoZone and they do it for free. You just turn it on, wait a second. It says it's good, but it needs to be recharged, which doesn't surprise me at all because I don't drive it much anymore. Should recharge it, I will one of these days. Let's say it either said bad battery or it was a weak battery. Gives a percentage. Let's say it says you got 30, 20, 30%. If you can get a battery, Get it now. Don't wait for it to go bad. What if there aren't any batteries to replace it with then? Common sense says they go for years and years and years. Yours is on its way out. Change it out now. Because here's something you might not know about batteries. A full charge battery can do a lot. But even a battery that's got 20% of its charge left will probably still start your car if you use it every day because it'll start it, then it gets recharged, then you start it again, it gets recharged. But if you're sitting around and you're hardly driving your car at all now, guess what? A weak battery will eventually start going uh, uh, and won't start at all. Because with everyday use, it keeps charging itself up and it seems like a normal battery to you. But one of these testing devices goes into the deep cycle of it. And it's telling you, the deep cycle is getting a little bit weak. Hey, change it out now. When there's batteries around, you don't have to even think about it then. Around me, all the auto zones and stuff are still open. If you wonder about your battery, just go over there, they test them in a parking lot free, and you can see, is it weak or is it still good? Or in a case of mine, if it's just weak and it needs recharging, go out and buy a battery charger. I got a big giant one in there, but these little ones work fine for you at home. You can plug it in in your garage or in a drive and just leave it on overnight. They're automatic and it'll recharge it while you're sleeping. And let's say, ah, you're home bored. Maybe jack up your car, pull the tires off. Look at the brake pads. If they're really thin, what the heck? Call up the store if they have them in stock. Change them out now. My videos will show you how to change them. Don't wait until they get down to the metal because if they get down to the metal, then they're gonna ruin the rotor and you're gonna have to pay more money. And also, if they don't have brake pads then when it wears out, you can't really drive the car because when it's metal to metal, it eats things up. The braking is not safe. So why not take a little time and check them yourself and fix them now? rather than waiting too long. Now, of course, realize that car parts these days come from all over the world. A lot of people think everything comes from China. Well, actually, it doesn't. In the United States, a lot of the car parts come from Canada and Mexico, even more than from China. Manufacturing facilities continue to be shut down for a while, and the stockpiles of the old parts start disappearing. There might not be parts to fix your car with. Let's say you got tires that are really bald. Well, go buy them now. One, it's a safety thing. You don't want to be driving around on bald tires. But if they are bald, hey, call around. You can find people that have them in stock. Go in and have them put new tires on. 
You need to do it anyway. So why not just take advantage of this lag in our society and get things ready to up and run when things start rolling again? Now, it doesn't seem like there's going to be any shortage of gasoline. The price is so low, they're not selling that much of it. But let's say you normally drive your car all the time. Now you're hardly not driving it at all, or maybe it's your commuting car and you're not even using it. Here's a tip about gasoline. Your car's just sitting around. Hey. Fill it up at the closest gas station and then let it sit. Now gasoline does have a certain shelf life. It's mixed with a bunch of stuff. It doesn't last as long as it did when I was young. But generally, it doesn't even start to have problems in six months or so. But you want to fill your tank up. The gas tanks in modern cars are relatively sealed. But let's say you're almost out of gas. Then there's a whole bunch of air in your gas tank and a little bit of gasoline. If you let it sit for months on use, you want a whole bunch of gasoline and just a little bit of air because the air will help to oxidize the gasoline to make it go bad over time faster. When a tank's full of gas, there isn't much air, not as much oxidation takes place. It has a tendency of lasting longer. But if we have to, you're better having a car sitting full of gas in your garage or your driveway than you are one that's almost out of gas that's going to have all that air and it's going to oxidize faster. And the same thing's true of your engine oil. Although engine oil is a lot more stable than gasoline. You got dirty, filthy oil, why not take the advantage of you sitting at home, change your oil and filter. Clean oil and filter is going to last a lot longer than dirty stuff. It's just common sense. And you need to do it anyway. So if you've been holding off changing your oil and filter, hey, why not watch some of my videos? Learn how to do it yourself. Do it the right way. Use quality parts. All that stuff's still available now. I don't think they're going to run out of oil and oil filters anytime soon. They make things by the millions. Why not do it now? When you got lots of time. Look at the fan belt. If it's cracked, hey, replace it now. You might end up like me, being self-sufficient. Learn how to fix your car. It's actually quite enjoyable that you accomplish something. Most of our lives, people are doing intellectual work, paperwork, whatever. You don't feel like you got anything done. Here, you see the results of you did something. You changed the oil. You put brake pads on. You went out and got new tires put on for those old bald on safe ones. Hey, do it now. We got a lot of time on our hands. Why not make use of that? Don't sit around and grumble. Do positive things. And even if you're not going to do something yourself, let's say you got two cars. And you know that, hey, one of them needed some work, but you can use it for work. Most of the garages are still open. And yes, they're slower than they normally are. They'd be totally happy for you to drop your other car off and have it fixed when you don't need it. Throughout the years, I'm always juggling cars to try to get the people's cars back as fast as possible because it's their work cars. So if you're not going to work now, it's a perfect time to take your car in and get it fixed. Because believe me, good friends of mine that are also mechanics, hey, sometimes you gotta book them up two, three weeks ahead of time for appointments. It's not the case now. You can get in and out a lot faster. You don't have to worry about, oh, what am I gonna do to go to work? Because you're not going to work. And they'll be able to fix it faster. It's kind of a win situation there for a lot of people. And it helps the mechanics out too. Hey, I'm doing all I can to help out restaurants. I like eating, getting takeout. I want these people to survive. I like their food. So I go out of my way now and I eat more from restaurants than I did before. Yeah, it's takeout, but it tastes just as good when I bring it home. So now you know some reasons that hey, if we're stuck at home, might be a good time now to fix the things that need fixing in your car sooner than later. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Bobby613 says, Scotty, what do you think about skipping an oil filter every time I change my oil to every other time? I have a Buick Enclave, I can get the filter up, but I have a difficult time getting a new one threaded on. All right, no, don't, don't do it every other time. The Europeans decades ago used to do that to save money. They didn't have much money, I guess. But you're leaving all the dirty oil in the filter. The filter's been in there, and it's not going to work as good. It's clogged with dirt. You said you got no problem taking it off. Just take your time thread it on. Get a flashlight. Look at the threads. You might spray a little oil on the threads of the filter before you put it in so it goes smooth. Just do that. Don't leave both a dirty filter and the oil that's in it when you change the oil. That's that's making the old oil still be partially in there and a filter that's partially clogged up with new oil. You don't want to do that. It's not that big of a deal. Look closely. Get a flashlight and so you can see that it lines up great. And here's the easiest thing. 
All you got to do, you put that filter in, instead of trying to tighten it, turn it the loose way. And then when it goes click, then the threads are lined up, then tighten it up. Don't keep trying to tighten it, go backwards first. And then when you feel it click, then start tightening it, it should go on really easy. I learned that trick like 50 something years ago. <laughs>